In education, we often hear that we don't have enough money or it's, you know, we have a scarcity problem or we're cutting this or we're cutting that. The reality is America spends the most in the world in terms of raw dollars by far on our education system. We spend the second most in the world per student in our education system. We're spending more than a quarter million dollars per classroom in every classroom in America every year and getting some of the worst results. I would say the public school system is definitely broken. There are excellent schools in every sphere, but there are also a lot of bad public district schools, dropout factories as they're called. I think part of the problem is just low expectations. Those low expectations then lead to the results that kids don't get into colleges that can really transform their lives. I believe anyone can learn anything if given like the right access to an education. And, and that could look in the form of the quality of education, but also like the form of that education. We spend $9 billion a year on paper textbooks today that are out of date the minute they're printed. And yet here we are with the ability to have digital tools and digital texts that are updated instantaneously. Every kid now, regardless of geography, can have access to some of the best educational tools that exist in the world. And if we don't give every student the opportunity to learn things like computer science and really deep technology, we're in trouble because the rest of the world has figured that out and started to move ahead. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited. Welcome. So first off, I want you to pick up the phone and just power on the phone and click it in and it's nice and tight. The transition from a sort of analog teaching practice to a digital one and now to a virtual one really is going to change what teaching looks like, what classrooms look like. A lot of people are visual learners and you can learn that way instead of having to read it through a textbook, we can actually see it happening. I saw friends looking at heartbeats and hearts moving and how their body moves. One of the hardest things about learning is sometimes you just get these concepts and you don't know like how it connects to real life. Personalization is possible, differentiation is possible using VR and other tools, and that changes the whole paradigm of school. Wow, when in Rome. <laughs> My favorite subject right now is history, because like I like thinking about like what happened in the past and how it affects the future or present. Like when we first got inside the Colosseum, you saw the animation of like the two fighters and then like it shifted to like what it, the Colosseum looks like today. I like the fact that you feel like you're there. Like I forgot that I was like sitting in a room. International Space Station is what you should see. The phone we already have in our pocket, a $100 headset device are enough to give students experiences that they could never have dreamed just a few years ago. And what virtual reality does is it's going to expand the possibility of what they could be. So it is not unreasonable to imagine a, a low-income student in, in Harlem or in Kenya saying, I want to become an astronaut. There is no doubt how powerful VR is. Now with VR, we can show the kids things that used to be so complicated or complex to see or understand or even to get them excited about a feel. VR is really a tool that creates a scenario that doesn't exist. There isn't any other way to replicate space but in virtual reality. My role has been to develop the scenarios, procedures for the spacewalks, maintaining training, also supporting training here. Now I'm going to show you what it is to train like an astronaut. Come on, John. <laughs> First, we're going to put the gloves on, suit them up. VR will help in different areas. One is visualizing where you are in relation to the structure, in this case, the spacecraft. He's going to start doing in a spacewalk, so he's getting out of the airlock, which is the door to the outside world from the space station, and um, he's going to 
slowly start climbing around the space station, which is pretty complicated. He's gonna have to go all the way around to the end of this. Seeing a space, you don't know what is up and down, so you can lose track of where you are. It could be terrifying, right, John? Uh, yeah, when you're 200 miles up, your brain doesn't want you to let go. <laughs> <laughs> By training here, the astronauts, they feel more comfortable once they go out there. When they come back, the major thing they talk about is, well, how VR gave them more confidence. My ultimate goal is actually to have somebody, uh, you know, standing in a planetary surface and stream uh, VR from there and show the kids what they're looking at. Technology in and of itself, like, I don't think really solves a lot of the educational problems we have. It's, it's about being like purposeful and, and finding the right fit. It's interesting when you ease up on kids' conversations, especially as you start teaching them how to build VR experiences, and how they said, it would be cool if we built this. I created this solar system. We started off with just basic planets in a line, and then we had to add the rings, and so we struggled with that a little bit because we had to um, make the rings horizontal. It like positions you in a very weird place. Instead of like looking in on it, you're like in the middle of the sun, basically burning, looking at everything else. <laughs> I challenge you that with the skill set that you have now and are developing, is to look at your peers and see how can I invest them in things that they don't care about. I think that's what the beauty of technology is. It's not just I'm making a product, it's I'm making a product that people care about. I imagine that VR is, is powerful for practice, for professional development, for content, but it, it does one other thing, which is it expands ambition. It expands opportunity, people's ability to imagine themselves in places they've never imagined themselves before. We need to have strong, vibrant public schools so that kids can participate in our democracy. And so I really hope that the new administration builds on the work that President Obama did to get schools the technological tools they need. I think that since virtuality has no limit, then learning has no limit. Einstein, I like his quotes. My favorite is, logic will get you from A to B, but imagination will get you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>